Köszöntöm a kedves nézőket, jó estét kívánok! Elérte a legmagasabb pontját a BMW Group gyár Debrecen. A képzési központnál már a beltéri munkák is elkezdődtek. A debreceni lesz a német autóipari koncern mintaüzeme. Ez lesz a BMW első gyáregysége, ahol a tisztán elektromos meghajtású Noé Klasse modelleket gyártják. A fenntarthatósági célokat követve pedig nem használnak fosszilis energiát. Városunkban kezdődne a BMW jövője. Vendégem a stúdióban Hans Péter Kemsel, a BMW Group gyár Debrecen igazgatója. Welcome in the studio, Mr. Kemsel. We are very glad to have you here. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me. So let's uh, start with a warm-up question. Can you please introduce yourself and your career? How long have you been with the BMW? And what should we know about the BMW culture? Yeah, um, Hans Peter Kemsel, as you said, like I'm working for the company now for 26 years. So oh, some of our nice new period. colleagues, they're <laughs> saying, hey, 26 years, quite a long time. So I basically started out on the line, BMW in Regensburg, and I started out in maintenance. And I basically walked through the entire BMW through different locations worldwide. So I worked in Oxford, I worked in Berlin with motorcycles. Oh, wow. So I've seen different places. This is quite good. It's a company, you, you have the chance to go abroad, you learn about people and the culture. And during this time, I always met excellent people. Like the same like here, I have to be honest, all the people I met so far here. And talking about the culture, you mentioned it. So for, for me, is it like over these last 26 years, I learned a lot about how people are in different countries. And I have this saying, what people always say, like, it's never the strategy, it's always the culture. So here in Debertson, and my team are with me. We're spending a long time now discussing about the culture here in Debrecen. Mm -hmm. So what kind of cultures, what we're gonna, with the culture from here from Debrecen and the BMW culture, how can we integrate these two different cultures? So in a way that the people here in Debrecen, they bring their part in, and we also bring the part from BMW in. Mm -hmm. So that shows a lot, like for example, I'll give you an example, an easy example, like participation. For us at BMW, it's very, very important. Everybody on the table speaks up. It gives us feedback. If something didn't went well, hey, let's sit together and talk about what can we do better. And also part like subsid subsidiarity. So everybody has this process and you're responsible. And as long as you don't speak up, everything is fine. So we would like to have these things like uh, as a person who comes into our plant, you bring everything with you and you're participating in a great yeah in a great team i have to be honest and the people what we hired so far they were excellent yeah. and i think this is something what we really focus right now get the culture right first and then we probably talk about strategy but culture first so just one question about debrecen after living in so many cities yeah. uh, do you enjoy living here and is everything perfect oh, right now debrecen is great i love it <laughs> it's it's like uh, there's only one part about the language. The rest is so, <laughs> is so nice about, you know, I love to talk, to talk to the people walking down in the city. Uh, lots of students in the place, young city, everything is growing here. And wherever you go, friendly people. I like this so much. This is like, you know, as we have been in Oxford, in Spartanburg, in all these different places, but Debrecen is kind <laughs> of unique. And I like this quite a lot, and also my family. So my daughter is already here in Hungary. She studies here in Hungary. So this is awesome place. <laughs> I like it a lot, to be quite honest. That's really lovely to hear that. Uh, so this day marks another important milestone for BMW plant Debrecen. The structure has reached its uh, maximum height. You also had a topping ceremony. Uh, myself, I quite often come and go on Highway 33, and each month I realize that, uh, wow, they've made much progress again. Can you please sum up the latest updates about the um, uh, construction progress? Yeah. So today we talked about the paint shop. This is basically our biggest building, what we have. It has a dimension. I, was, I have to think about it because last weekend I talked to my father and he's, I explained to him, you see, this is the paint shop. The paint shop has 450 meters long and 28 meters high. Oh, my dad is 83 years, and I said, like, what? How large is this building, you know? And then I have to explain him, yes, we're building this plant on 400 hectares. And I'm coming from a small town. I have to explain it to him. So like, this is the entire town. And I was like, wow, 
this is awesome. So basically what we have done today, it's like the paint job, and I'm coming from Bavaria, from the, from the mountains. So this topping ceremony means a lot to us because this is like we put a roof on a building and this is a shelter that, that's a starting point. From here on, we start to install the equipment, everything else. So this topping ceremony is important. And as you can see, when you pass by this large building, but you also can see the other buildings, like the, you know, we have a press shop, in basically where we formed the steel in different forms. Then we have the, what we call the body and white shop where we do the welding, paint shop we already talked about, assembly. But we also have the building, what we announced last year in November, where we do the battery assembly mm -hmm. on site on the plant. Oh, we even hired people already. They're working in the network right now. So this is moving quite well and you can see it. And to be quite honest, I'm very proud of it. And sometimes I explain to people say like, listen, because we had to do some piling though. The entire plant is on piles. We, we did about, what, 16,500 piles. I call it a little bit, little <laughs> Vines, because we have so many different piles. But every time I walk out, the people are so nice. They're working on these things. You can see the progress. And I have the same like you. When I'm driving down 35, I can see the whole thing is growing quite fast. So we're looking forward to move into especially like the central building, what we call mm -hmm. like the communication center. And you also have your own uh, health center. Actually, it's already functioning temporarily, mm -hmm. as far as I know. Uh, is it compulsory to establish one over a certain number of employees or it's the company's decision to mirror how much it values its employees? See, uh, the health center is in every plant a very, very important part. Because for, for us at BMW, our associates is, are the most important what we have. So we have to take care about our associates. So we do everything for our associates. And that we install a health care center exactly the same like what we have in Germany. So we can do all the tests, you can, whether you're seeing tests, all these different things. Mm -hmm. You probably have seen all the equipment, what we have to be, even do hearing tests for the people. Mm -hmm. So we take care about our associates. And also, if something happens on site, so the doctors, we have doctors out there, they take care immediately for this person. Oh, I see. This is very, very important. I have a saying because health and safety needs to go hand in hand because mm -hmm. every associate comes on site, he has the right to get safe home. Mm -hmm. And if something happens, we're going to be quick mm -hmm. and we have to be there quick. We so, even have a fire brigade, you know, a oh. huge fire brigade if something happened there okay. too. So actually from a headache and a toothache to, I don't know, maybe mental problems, help is within reach immediately In, for everyone. Including okay. food, to be quite honest. We're, <laughs> we're giving advices if somebody has high pr blood pressure, what he can do. We're, when you go to the canteen, we're taking care that the food is also something very important for us, that the people, what they eat, it's important. So we're taking care about all these mm -hmm. things. We offer it to our associates so everybody can take a part of it. Yes, it also applies to the canteen, no matter uh, what allergy or intolerance someone is suffering from, right? Yeah, you, you, you can read it even what's in the food, so this is, <laughs> yeah, you smile about it, but for us at BMW, see, we want everybody, when they come to work with us, that they really, you know, they, that they really can bring everything in, and, and mm -hmm. we can offer quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So people are in the focus, by all means. How many employees have you had so far? So uh, let me look at the numbers like there. In March, we had about, we hired about 200 people from Hungary. So the majority mm -hmm. is like in this region of Debrecen, but also from East Hungary and the rest of Hungary, some from outside. Mm -hmm. I had a nice experience with a guy who's working in IT. He used to work in London and he's from Debrecen and he was studying a lot, worked a lot. Now he's coming home. I said this phrase, hey, this is like homecoming, you know? And he's like, <laughs> wow, yes it is. So more and more people living abroad also coming back to the home country. And yesterday it was what well, we have onboardings. There's about uh, 40, 50 people. And I talked to a few people and said like, yeah, I was living abroad. Now I'm coming home to my family. I have the chance now because of BMW working here. And this is quite nice because these people, they're sending you so much, you know, I'm coming back and everything what I learned even abroad. And now I can bring it back to my country. And this is something looking on the people, how <laughs> proud they are now to, to help to build up this plant. And that's something very special. How do you do the interviews, face-to-face -face or um, 
Uh, oh it's, a, it's a procedure. Don't even ask me. <laughs> okay. Because my interview was like 26 <laughs> years ago. But uh, basically, I, I have a saying during the recruitment for us, it's, uh, we, we call it a little bit, you know, we can teach you everything. Because BMW is a the large companies, even the people what we hired so far, we take care of Monday, we, we bring them to Germany, they train, they come back on Friday. So we can teach you everything. So during the hiring process, we always look whether you fit to our culture, the culture what we have. This is the, the fitting part. It's not like, it's more like, does this person with everything what he's bringing, does it fit to the culture of what we're looking for? Mm -hmm. Does it mean that every new employee has to go to Germany to this training center? Or, no, or, or some of them are trained here in Hungary? It, it depends what phase and what position is okay. in. You know? So some people we train in Germany, mm -hmm. like maintenance people, because that's the place. So we're looking in which plant we have the same technology. So we send this person to this plant, we train them there. Mm -hmm. Like some of them are even going to Leipzig, for example, and they were very happy about it. They're explaining me about Leipzig, Debrecen, how close it is, what similarity. So we train them every place where we say. Some others are not going; they stay here. So we bring people in to train them here. Mm -hmm. It always depends a little bit, but the majority right now, especially maintenance people, technicians, we bring to Germany to train them, to give them the experience to see the equipment as it is running, and then they can learn the fastest. And on the other way, then afterwards, when they're coming back and we start running the plant, we bring these people where they were on the job training, we bring them back here to Hungary to help the associates I to see. get the line running. Uh, how, about, how about the language skills? In each position, um, employees has to speak or understand English and or German, or we have to differentiate between the white collar positions and the blue collar yeah, positions? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Some of them, in some position, it helps us quite a lot if they can speak English. I'm quite amazed how many speak German. This is another one. Right. But German is not mandatory at all. But so then, if you speak in German, they had, they had it in high school, German. I'm like, mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> Compared to my Hungarian, they're doing quite well. So in some positions, we, we're saying that it helps a lot to have English on it. And on, on the shop floor, uh, it's like it's Hungarian. Mm -hmm. Which experts are wanted at uh, this phase of recruitment? So we're like, oh, by the end of this year, we're talking about another 400 people what we're recruiting and seven different positions. So this is all over. Uh, you, you should look on our career page, you see all these different jobs right now. So there's quite a lot in <laughs> different fields. And BMW also uh, counts on the youngsters. Uh, you will launch a dual vocational training program that partners with the local vocational schools. As uh, formally stated, um, um, recruitment of the talented students in grade 10 would start this year. How is this recruitment going now? Yeah, so the recruitment, so we start this year in September with about 100 young students. Or wow. 100, so they already signed up. So they're all already in position, they're ready to go. So we just have to finish the building. So the, mm -hmm. probably by the end of August, the building is ready. So for us, for BMW, it's very important doing this because when you look in an existing plant, for example, the place I used before I came here to Debrecen, and I, worked in, I was working six years in Leipzig as running the plant there. So we hiring, the majority of our people were coming through this training. So every fifth person was coming through this training. And for me, it's quite important because I've done the same. So when I was really? young, yeah, uh -huh. I was running through this training. That means a lot, you learn so much about it. And when you look in our new training center, it's gonna be very unique, you will see a lot but September, you should come in September, you should see. I will, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Super. Looking forward uh, after to. completing this program, do they have a good chance to get a full-time job at the company? Yeah, at BMW, we always we train people, we invest in quite a lot in this person. We have, you know, we hire this person. Mm -hmm. uh, in Germany, we do that 100%. So okay. this is, because we, we're thinking quite a lot uh, the, how the training is going with the local schools here and even now we change it a little bit that we say like they're going to be one week, not three days, entire week with, a, with us. Mm -hmm. And then during the training, they go out to different stations there, not the first ones, but later on when the plant is running, they have different locations where we train them in different areas. Uh, training is excellent. If I think back what my training was compared to them, oh, here they learn so much all about this new car.
So we've talked about the uh, workers and the future workers. Let's now talk about the production. When will the production line arrive at Debrecen? What date did you set for the uh, trial production? Yeah. And when is the actual production um, scheduled? I might ask that, uh, when will you press the start button? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a nice picture, by the way. But to push the start button in between, we, we still have a lot to do. So as we said, like the paint shop, now we have the roof on it. So what we're going to do now, next, we, we start installing the equipment. That's quite a lot in the paint shop. Mm -hmm. So then next year, so we're like the end of next year, we do the first pre-runs. So we're testing everything, whether it's working, do a kind of small cars where we see example whether everything is right working out right whether the paint is right whether the forms dimensions everything is right and then the year afterwards in 2025 as you can read or in the paper then we start the production of the neue Klasse of BMW On so which? the first of all on um, which everyone has an eye, I think. Yeah, they have <laughs> Every, to. Everyone yeah. is interested uh, in it. We have to push the button then. Okay. But it's important for BMW because this new car, that's what we call, it's like the, the game changer, mm -hmm. as we call Neue Klasse. Mm -hmm. As you, you were reading about Neue Klasse, it was for BMW also a very, very important milestone in the past because this Neue Klasse uh, in the 60s, you know, we did these huge cars, what they call Baroque. And if you see one on TV, yeah, huge cars. And I remember my first car was an 1807, a yellow <laughs> one. I had to fix it for half a year before I could even drive it. And I was always dreaming about BMW, I have to be honest. Uh, and I, for me, is it like now I'm coming back and I'm building the next Dinoe Classe for BMW. And this is basically the transformation for BMW mm -hmm. in the future with this new platform. And we're doing quite a lot with this new Klasse. Besides having this new structure of the car, it has a new service pack. You can do the autonomous driving on the autobahn with the car, as you can read. You may have seen a few pictures of it, because they showed the D in Las Vegas when you saw it on. I was amazed uh, by it. Yeah, that's the it's, car from Debrecen, by the way. It's going to tell me that, uh, hi, Marianne, how are you? Yeah. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> really, they are really intelligent yeah. ones. Yeah, this is the next, this is the future where it's coming. So and can we say that the future of the BMW really starts here in Debrecen? Yes, that puts a lot of pressure on me, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <but laughs> yeah. Yes, it does, yes, wow. it does. So last week we were spent another two, three days with the board talking about where the car is standing, what's coming, and where we're standing. So they really have a very close look on it. So it's really the state of the art and cutting edge technology. That's for BMW the future. And based on what we do here, we can, uh, this platform then goes in every plant. Mm -hmm. So this is really, really important for us here. But it's good. And what is also important for you is sustainability and uh, being green. Uh, historically, the automotive industry has not uh, much focused on um, sustainable practices. Even today, I think car company, many car uh, companies uh, use huge amount of uh, energy, metal, uh, plastics. How does BMW uh, drive toward a sustainable future? See, this is something, when we started out, you know, talking about the new plant, we spent a long, long time thinking about, so what's important for the plant? So we came up with this new name, what we call iFactory, lean, green, and digital. In the kind of lean that we were thinking about, the layout of the plant needs to be very short ways, everything needs to be short. Because when you think about the energy, what you need, you have to think about so how can we make lay, get the layout that we can use energy. Because people, when they talk about green, I say like first you have to save energy, and then you have to think about what energy are you using. Mm -hmm. There is no gas, no oil, nothing. We just use electricity, and what we do with the electricity. Now we are up to this point saying like one third of the electricity, what we need, the energy we produce on site. Mm -hmm. So. You will see in the future when you pass by with your car, we install about close to 30 hectares of solar panels wow. to produce one third of the electricity mm -hmm. what we need. And the other two thirds, we're going to buy certified green energy. So that's the one part with the energy part. Okay. We're, we're thinking a lot what we do in other plants like biodiversity. We're installing apple trees, get the apples, get chews out of it for the associates, mm -hmm. things like this. 
uh, in Leipzig we had bees, for example. Now we have in everything plants we have bees. You can do this quite a lot because when you look on the CO2 footprint, and the CO2 footprint is a lot for us, I think the CO2 footprint also in production will be very important in the future. The BMW group um, comprises over 30 sites, sites, as I remember, worldwide. Still, as I have heard, this is going to be the most unique and uh, one of its kind, as we have uh, mentioned. Does it mean that the experts from BMW will come here and, and study how it functions uh, and study the, the processes and the this progress? Is a this is a, a, a neat point. First, you're right. This is going to be a state of the art, do everything what we can do. You probably have seen it when we talk about digital part, what we do with NVIDIA, Omniverse, you know? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to come here. You can walk through the plant already. So like the other week, I was walking through the plant. I, we were discussing about the robots, where the robots are already standing. You can see all different things. We even talked about the colors. Is the color right or wrong? So you can see everything. Even for our suppliers, we can cut it out, send it to them. This is the dimension. This is where it comes in. So the planets worldwide, they, they're not coming physically. Yes, right. some of them will come, but you also can sit and walk through the plant already. And we can discuss with them online, hey, what's going on here and there? Can you help me on this part? So we're using all these technologies even in smart maintenance, if they have a breakdown, yeah, they can use their smart devices and like and talking to somebody in Germany or in Africa, in, in, in America, wherever in the, in the world. So we really, really get up to the cutting edge and say like, hey, this whole thing, it's getting closer and closer, working very close together. And this is something we were looking into it. With a lot, a lot of things, as we go on, we explain you a little bit about, and even changing the way how we work in the plant. Like, we're talking about our central building, what we call communication center, by the way. Uh, we discussed a lot over the last nine months how people are working together, you know, where they're positioned. We, we, we were drawing some communication diagrams. Okay, you're talking a lot to this person, you sit here and there. We're talking about agile working. We have like 30% less tables than workers, so we know not everybody is coming in every day. You can work also sometimes from home. There's all different things, or you know, you're somewhere on a business trip. So we're discussing it a lot, and nobody, by the way, has a fixed table, including myself. So you're coming in, you have a home zone, <laughs> this is where you sit. Yeah, this is the culture part. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this is going to be, so we have an own training area, so we probably have to discuss it quite a lot because for some people, they really would like to have their own table. We're not doing this anymore. At the end of the day, clean <laughs> table, you walk in, you say, this is my home zone, this is where you sit. And it works out quite well, I'll be sure. I, we discussed it a lot with the team, and people say like, yes, this is different, but I'm looking forward to these things. We really, really look forward to the further news, and we also look forward to uh, you to come back and keep us updated. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank, Thank you. you. Kedves nézőink, önöknek pedig nagyon szépen köszönjük a figyelmüket, tartsanak velünk legközelebb is viszontlátásra.